hey, eighth grade, so our learning target today is I can multiply and divide numbers in scientific notation. You should be on page 25. So let's first remember what scientific notation is. It's a way to rewrite numbers so it's easy to read the numbers. So we talked yesterday about the coefficient has to be a number between 1 and 10. Remember, it has to be less than 10. So 999 we can take, we cannot take 10. So a number between 1 and 10. And then we have multiplication by a power. If it's positive, it means it's a big number. If it's negative, it means it's a small number. Just keep that in mind in our work from yesterday. So we know how to write numbers in scientific notation. And we were working back and forth yesterday between scientific and standard. Scientific notation is standard form. In today's work, we're going to talk about how do we actually multiply and divide numbers in those forms. So here we go. We have a couple steps that I want you to think about. Now you will need a calculator to do some of the work today. So if you haven't picked one up, go ahead and grab one. Any calculator really will do. It's just a calculator that can multiply a couple of numbers and divide a couple numbers. So we're going to use the commutative property to rearrange things. So that's when we flip the order around. You've been doing commutative property for a long time. So we flip that order around. Do so you go ahead and abbreviate any of that commutative property to rearrange numbers? And after we do that, we're going to multiply the first numbers. So you're going to go ahead and multiply first numbers. When you multiply the first numbers, you know that you add the exponents of the tens. When if they have the same base, you add the exponents. We just got done talking about that in our exponent early in our exponent unit. So these are all kind of tying together. And then after we do that, we're going to check the notation to make sure that we're back in scientific. We need that scientific notation. Go ahead and copy those notes down. I'll slow down so that you have a chance to write. Everybody should be writing. Okay, so there are that, that's our steps. So everything that we see should be in some form of scientific notation. If it's not, we would convert. We're going to talk about how to multiply, which is going to require us to re rearrange some things. So here is my two problems. We have these two parentheses, but just a reminder from elementary math that two parentheses when touching each other really means the operation of multiplication. So we have 1.1 times 10 to the 7th multiplied by 4.2 times 10 to the 2nd. If we rearrange things that are like terms, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange and put the coefficients together because they're both numbers. I'm going to switch those into the same parenthesis using the commutative property so that 1.1 that coefficient, coefficient multiplied by the other coefficient is going to get squeezed into the same parenthesis. We're going to do the same thing with those powers as they are like terms as well. So with the powers then I have 10 to the 7th and 10 to the 2nd. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 10 to the 7th multiplied by 10 to the 2nd. As I start to solve there, working left to right, we have 1.1 multiplied by 4.2. When we do that, we end up with 4.62. Go ahead and type that in. Make sure you get 4.62. Everybody grab that calculator. 1.1 multiplied by 4.62. I'm sorry. 1.1 multiplied by 4.2. The answer you should be getting is that what you see on purple on my screen is 4.62. Then... What we've talked about is this multiplication of powers. We've been talking that if, as long as you have the same base number, you can add the power. So that becomes times 10 to the seventh power. Now our job in step four is to make sure that you're in scientific notation. We've been talking scientific notation. First digit has to be a number between one and 10. You have to multiply by a power of 10. The beauty of this problem is when we solved, we were already in the proper notation. So we are done. The final answer is what you see in yellow on my screen. 4.62 times 10 to the 7th power called scientific notation. All right, guys, next example. In this next example, what we're going to do is we're going to combine like terms, kind of rearrange things using the commutative property. So we're going to put those two coefficients, 5.1 and, and 4.1 in parentheses, 5.1 times 4.1 in a parenthesis. And then we're going to combine like terms of the powers. So we're going to multiply 10 to the second power times 10 to the third power. So we combine the coefficients, 5.1 and 4.1 multiplication. And we're going to do the same thing with the powers, 10 squared times 10 to the third. When I start to do that then, I type in 5.1 times 4.1 in my parent in my calculator. And I end up with 20.91. 20.91. 
And when we do our powers, 10 to the second power times 10 to the third power, as long as we have the same base, we can add the exponents. So same base of 10, we can add the exponents. We talked about that in the properties rule. So here's my, my, the number I'm dealing with, 20.91 times 10 to the fifth power. But when we look at step four, remember it has to be in scientific notation. So in our fake, our coefficient has to be a number between one and 10. We multiply by a power of 10. The bank is not going to accept $20.91. It just won't in scientific notation. So we're going to have to readjust that coefficient. I'm going to move it over and give it $2.09. And I'm going to put the 1 on the end just so that I didn't lose any digits there. So 2.09 with that 1 hanging out. And when I move that, I have to adjust the power. So I'm going to adjust the power one spot so that what, it, what ends up happening now when we rearrange this, this is kind of a little bit new for us, is that if I made this this value uh, smaller, it was $20. I made it smaller to put in the bank. It's $2.09 with a 1 on the end. If I make the coefficient smaller, I have to adjust the power in the opposite way. I'm going to have to make the power bigger. So what's 1 bigger than 5? It's going to be a power of 6. So if we adjust to make the coefficient smaller, we have to do the very opposite thing on the power. That's the first time we've seen that. Our final answer then would be 2.091 times 10 to the 6th power, and we are done. Next problem then, we're multiplying these two parentheses. We're going to combine like terms in a parenthesis. So we have 8.5 multiplied by 1.7 in that first parenthesis. And now we're going to work through those powers. We have 10 squared times 10 to the 6. We're combining things that are like. Using the commutative property that allows us to move some things around. Go ahead and catch up there if I'm going too fast. So we have 10 to the second power times 10 to the sixth power there. Okay, as I start to solve them, working left to right, we have 8.5 multiplied by 1.7. 8.5 multiplied by 1.7. Typing that in your calculator, you end up with 14.45. We're going to multiply here. The base that I have is 10. Now you have to have the same base in order for this work. If you have the same base, you can add the exponent. So we have 2 plus 6. So we have 10 to the 8th power. So we have 14.45 times 10 to the 8th power. The bank only accepts a coefficient of 1 to 10. We multiply by a power of 10. So 14.45 is not going to fit in the bank there. So we're going to go ahead and have to adjust that. So we do that. I'm going to go ahead and move the decimal one place to the left. So that's $1.44. And I'm not going to round anything. I'm just going to keep all of that in the bank. Um, otherwise, it's kind of like $1.45 if we were to round. But I'm going to keep all of that in the bank as long as it meets the criteria. Now, if we adjust from $14 down to $1, we made the coefficient smaller. We have to do the exact opposite thing on the power so if we made the coefficient smaller to fit in the bank, we have to do the opposite um, by adjust the power by one. So we made the coefficient smaller by one unit, one decimal movement. We have to do the same thing on the power. So in scientific notation, I'm ready now with my answer. It's 1.445 times 10 to the positive 9th power. Where in scientific notation, we are done. So that's multiplication of numbers in scientific notation. The next thing we're going to do is talk about division. What do we, how do we divide numbers in scientific notation? So kind of the same process, but it's using division as the operation. Same kind of division rule or um, power rules, however. First thing we'll do is we'll divide the numbers. Most of you will want your calculator to do the division for sure, um, unless you want to do division by hand with decimals. I'm doubting that you want to do that. We're going to use our power rules back into the first lesson of this unit, which we will subtract the, the powers, as long as we have the same base. We talked about when we're dividing things with the same base, with the power, we can subtract the exponents. And then we will make sure that we have scientific notation when we're done. Now, if I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause that video. All right, guys, as we start to solve them. So we have this first example. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out like terms. Beautifully, though, in Division is they're already stacked and organized for you. I love that part about division. So we have 2.5 divided by 1.8. Go ahead and put that in your calculator. Everybody should be typing that in. 2.5 divided by 1.8. When you type that in, you end up with 1.39. Make sure you're getting 1.39. We talked in the very first unit of this 
uh, lesson of this unit, as long as you have the same base here, you can subtract the exponent. So that's one of the rules about one of the properties of division with powers. So 10 to the seventh minus 10 to the second, we subtract those, that becomes 10 to the fifth. Okay, so step three is to check the notation, make sure we're in scientific notation, those two rules. We need one to $10 in the bank. We have to multiply by a power of 10. $1.39 fits in the bank, so we are done. We already in scientific notation, 1.39 times 10 to the fifth power. All right, next problem here. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this problem. 4.1 divide by 8.2. Go ahead and type in your calculator. 4.1 divide by 8.2. All right, typing that in your calculator, you should end up with 0 0.5. We're going to go ahead and talk about that same thing. We have the same base here. We can subtract the exponent. So this gets a little tricky. That's 10 to the negative fourth power. 4 subtract 8 top power minus bottom power, it becomes negative. So now step three is just to make sure that we are in scientific notation. Remember the bank only accepts $1, $10. This is really functioning like 50 cents. Bank's not gonna accept that. It's not between one and 10. So we're gonna have to adjust that to fit it in the bank. So we're gonna adjust it and call it $5. Bank can take $5. If we adjust the coefficient, we make it bigger by one, uh, one movement, we have to do the exact opposite in the power. We're going to have to make this smaller. So if we make the coefficient bigger by one unit, we have to make the power smaller by one. Be very careful about this because we're talking negative four. Negative meaning you owe somebody $4. So what's something smaller or worse than owing somebody $4? Owing somebody $5 by one unit would be worse because it's negative four. Owe somebody four, make it smaller, make it worse, you would owe somebody five. Now make sure you're in scientific notation. So $5 in the bank, yep, we can take it. Multiply by 10 to the negative fifth, yes, we can take it. Our final answer is five times 10 to the negative fifth in scientific notation. Next problem, dividing scientific notation. The beauty of this is they're already stacked in like terms. I love that part. 1.1 divided by 5.2. So we don't have that community property here like we did up in multiplication. It's already organized for us. Go ahead and type in 1.1 divided by 5.2. It's going to be a super big whopping number. So why don't you go ahead and round that to the nearest hundredth, I suppose. Round to the nearest hundredth, just because otherwise you're going to have to write it out forever. So I'm going to, or you know what, let's go one, two, three, four places. And you can kind of dot, dot, dot it. So when you write that out, you have 0 0.2115. And then I'm going to dot, dot, dot. Otherwise, we're going to fill up the whole page with that decimal answer. I feel like it's going to just go on forever. Now, same base. We learned in that first unit, when we're dividing something with the same base, we can subtract the exponent. So 5 take away 2 gives me a power of 3. Now for scientific notation, you have to have a number of one to 10 to go in the bank. And then you have to multiply by a power. So as I'm looking at this, this is like 21 cents, it's too small. So we're gonna have to adjust that to get it into the bank. To make that adjustment then, we're gonna have to move one place to the right, which becomes $2 and 115. Now I'm not gonna round anything, I'm just gonna put it all in the bank. So now I can take it because it's $2 and something. I couldn't take 20 cents though. So what I did is I just made this bigger. Now I know I'm writing over old work. I made it bigger, 20 cents to $2 to get it in the bank to get my coefficient. I have to adjust it on the power. My power then has to get smaller. So I had a power of three, make it smaller. It becomes a power of positive two. So make sure you're in scientific notation when you're done. First digit has to be a number between one and 10 in the bank. We're going to multiply by a power of 10, and we have 10 to the second power. That's called scientific notation. Okay, guys, so we talked multiplication. We talked division of scientific notation. Let's talk about a word problem in scientific notation using those same rules. We have one. We have two word problems, and then we have a summary, and we're done with this lesson. So hang in there, guys. We're already at the 14-minute mark. I just need you to hang in there, okay? So scientific notation, problem solving. The speed of light is about 1.86 times 10 to the five, fifth miles per second. So 1.86 times 10 to the fifth, and that's in one second. That's how fast light travels. That's for one second. What we want to know is how far does it travel in 68 seconds. 
So it's going to feel a little bit different than what we just got done doing. But I have 68 of those. Because in one second, it travels 1.86 times 10 to the fifth. We're going to do that 68 times, not just one second, 68 seconds. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because it's kind of hard to see the like terms here. But when I go to combine like terms, my coefficients are this and that. Notice I don't have another base 10 anywhere. That's okay. You don't have to. We still can rearrange. So that's 1.86 times 68. That's called combining like terms, 1.86 times 68. The only thing that we have for our base or for our exponent is just this 10 to the fifth. There isn't anything to combine with. That's okay. We do that all the time when we're adding um, things with like terms. So we're going to go ahead and use our calculator and type this in 1.86 times uh, 68. And I'm going to type it in at the same time because I'm not sure about the rounding on that. I don't know what that decimal looks like. I forgot. 1.86 multiplied by 68. Okay, so it does kind of break off there. So that becomes 126.48. If I haven't used it, I drag it down. So when you type in those black numbers, 1.86 multiplied by 68, I get 126.48. Now it says in that we always have to write in scientific notation, at least this is what the directions say on up above. The bank only accepts numbers from 1 to 10. It's not going to accept $126 in it. It just isn't. isn't. So we're going to rearrange that decimal. So we're going to take the decimal, we're going to move it so it takes it $1.26. And I'm going to throw that 4.8. I'm going to throw everything into the bank. Times 10. Adjust the power now. When we adjust the coefficient, we have to adjust the power. Now be very careful. This one's a little bit different. So we had $126. We adjust the power. We made it smaller, but be careful. We actually made it smaller by two place values. So therefore, we have to make the power bigger, the opposite, by two place values. So we had the coefficient was 126. We made it smaller to fit in the bank of $1.26. We moved it by two place values, really two times, two tens is what's happening there. So we have to adjust two of the tens in the power. We're going to make the power bigger by two place values becomes 10 to the seventh power. So therefore, in co our, our scientific notation is 1.2648. I'm going to keep all of that times 10 to the positive 7. Because we moved it two places on the left side for the coefficient to fit it in the bank, we have to adjust the power by two places as well. All right, guys, hang in there. Last word problem of the day, and then we have our summary. The average flow rate of the Amazon River is 7.6 times 10 to the 6. So that's the Amazon River. The average flow rate of the Mississippi River is 5.53 times 10 to the fifth cubic feet per second. Find the ratio of the flow rate of the Amazon River to the flow rate of the Mississippi. So the Amazon over the Mississippi. Make sure you check, make sure you read them in order. You make sure you check them out that they're in the correct order. So we have seven point, because in the homework assignment, by the way, guys, it does get switched up and it's not in the correct order when you read. So make sure you read carefully and put things in the right spot. So we're going to find the ratio, which really means, ratio means it's a fraction or a division problem. So here it comes. Here's my division problem. The Amazon compared to the Mississippi. And there's that division problem, that ratio that happens. All right, so here we go. Dividing the coefficients. So we have 7.6 divided by 5.53. Go ahead and type that in. I'm going to type it in at the same time. So we have 7. 0.6 divide by 5.53. And I'm going to cut that off. Gives me 1.374. I think I'll just kind of cut it off there. There's more digits there, but I'm not going to write them all. Times 10. So I'm just doing the division. That's 1.374 with a bunch more digits. Then if you have the same base and you're dividing, you can subtract the power. So that's 10 to the first power. Now our job is to make sure that we're in scientific notation on this last step. Bank has to accept one to $10 and we're multiplying by a power of 10. We already are in scientific notation because this is one to $10, $1.37 with this four hanging out with me, times 10 to the first power, we are done in scientific notation. So everything we did today is called multiply, divide in scientific notation. For our summary today, make sure you check answer of uh, notation of final answer. Scientific notation is what I'm looking for. 
that means it has to meet these two criteria. The two criteria. Here's the bank. This has to be between one and ten dollars. The power. If it's positive, it means it's really big. If it's negative, it means it's really small. So be aware of that. So those are two major notes in scientific notation. We've been talking about that the last two days of class. Make sure you've locked that in. So your homework tonight is to work on multiply and divide in scientific notation. You have page 26, 27, and 28. Part of 27 and part of 28 is just review stuff. So 26 and 27 are really hitting today's learning target. Be very careful when you get to question number 12 as the question, the way the problem is worded, it's not necessarily in order. So make sure that you're writing things in the correct spot. Um, that's just a really tricky one. Be very careful in question 12 that you're putting things in the correct spot. Your homework is basically to finish all the way through page 28. Have a fabulous night, eighth grade.